Hello, this is Ashan from First AI. Today I'm gonna to walk you through the application and let's get down some of the basics. With Purse AI, you can train an AI model on your own data. So your messages, your, the posts that you write, your favorite book passages, whatever data you wanna train your AI, AI on, these are converted into memories. And then your AI model trains on these memories, learning about you, your interests, the way you write, your preferences and your opinions. From here, as your AI model has more and more memories, it can respond to other people on your behalf, whether it's natively in our application or it's externally through our various integrations. And from here, the more memories you add to your person AI, the more accurate it will be. And with, with your person AI, you can use it to respond to other people. As mentioned, you can use it yourself to recall past memories or to find, um, documents and other data sources and a brainstorm new ideas based on what you know in your own voice. So let's get started with a very foundational aspect of the personal AI platform, which is AI personas. Everyone has different occupations, hobbies, uh, purposes for their AIs. Um, people have their professional life, personal life, favorite pastimes or specific projects. So these are just different phases of the same person. So with AI personas, the purpose of this is to be able to create different AIs and keep your data separate. Um, so I would think of them as like folders just to organize your memories. And from here, you can chat individually with these AIs. So you have that se separated memory that you can access. And then furthermore, furthermore, you can also share these AI personas out with other people based on what you want to actually share with them. So usually a, a big thing I advise is for, is while you think about your AI personas, think about your different external groups or communities that you'd want to interact with and separate your AI personas and memories based off of that. Um, you know, personas can also be good for tougher, smaller projects or to, you know, round up important information on a specific topic to share with a friend. But when you're getting started, I would keep it a bit more simple and just start off with uh, maybe a few or a, a, a more broad separation. Uh, or if your purpose is more narrow right now, that's completely fine. You can always add more personas. And then up here is the primary. This is optional. So you'd have to go to your advanced settings to enable it. But the purpose of the primary is to just be able to interact with all of your AI personas at once. So um, there, we, we, we understand there is value in being able to talk to all of your personas at once and access all of your memory. So with your primary, you can do just that. And it's basically unified and carries the data of all AI personas while AI personas themselves do not carry the data of any other AI personas. They're in, they're in, they have their own individual data. Now let's talk about a personal language model. So person AI uses a personal language model to make all of this happen, unlike an LLM or a large language model like ChatGPT. And a PLM is trained on your own data. So it's grounded in it, meaning that it will always base itself on your memories, keeping AI hallucinations under control. So to illustrate this, um, here's what happens when you ask a question to your person AI. So this is a new AI I just created. I only I added a few messages to memory, so it has very. It only knows these three facts about myself. So, although this is a simple example, it's meant to illustrate just the, the basics of how the model works. So, when I ask a question, the personal language model generates an answer based on the memories that I have, and so far, these three are my memories in this AI. If my, if the model can't generate a meaningful response based on my memory, then it sends a response to an LLM to generate the rest of an, to generate the rest of the answer. Um, ideally this fills the gaps and allows the AI to generate a complete reply. So how do you know when a response is coming from your memories or from somewhere else? This personal score will tell you all of that. As you can see here, I. Stat, I say add to memory that I was from the Bay Area. So when I asked this, it has an 84% personal score. 
you'll get an indicator here of what's considered a good low or um, medium person score, but above 60% or 50% is considered usually very good. And from here, you can see some of the factors that dictate the personal score. So it does not, it's not only based on how much of this response is coming from your memory, but it's also based on accuracy, relevance, and fluency. So this response allows you to have full, allows there to be full transparency and for you to understand when responses are coming from your memory. And when you get a response with a poor personal score, when you ask a question that is not, that is out of scope or not, that you don't have memories on, you can simply add more data in or add more memories based on that topic, or you can simply just even edit the response, put in the correct response and then press save. And then from there, your person and I will have that knowledge, you know, forever. So that's, that's how I would think about a personal language model, and that's a big part of the interaction. And then another important thing that I want to want to discuss is that your AI is not pre-trained. So when I say it's not pre-trained, it has no, you know, it has no agenda itself. Meaning, in the past, when you've talked to AIs, um, you may have had experience where you can ask it questions about its capabilities. You can ask questions about, you know, about you know, how do I train you? How can I use this, this AI? But this AI is basically completely untrained. It's, I would think of it as an unmolded block of clay. Therefore, it doesn't have knowledge on itself even. It's a clean slate and you're putting in the data to create whatever you want. So a lot of times people will come in and they'll ask questions to the person AI about, its, about the AI itself. Um, given what is common with LLMs. So that's just an important thing to keep in mind. Um, I would treat talking to your person AI almost as if you are talking to a baby at the beginning. And then as you train it, it grows up. Um, so everything, you have complete control over what it says um, and based on the memories that you add. And that's an important part of this model also. Now let's move on to adding to memory. So uh, I know I've mentioned most of this video, memory, memory, adding to memory. Um, so, and, and uh, sometimes you also you also might hear it be called stacking, um, which which is the same as adding to memory. But adding to memory is the process of saving any data to your AI. There are various ways to do this. As you, you saw from my previous example, you can add a memory based on a message. So any message that you type or you see, you can just simply press the plus to save it to your memory. Um, lots of times I'll we see people when they ask questions and they get a good response, they'll actually add that to memory to affirm that concept to their AI. But um, there's various ways to add to your memory. You can press plus on your next to your message bar and upload files and links um, and manage integrations very quickly. And then you can press on the gear icon to go to training spaces, which is more, um, which has, which, which is more focused on the bigger uploads. Um, so that process of when you're getting started, finding all of your data, and then adding it all here. So it's basically uh, based on the situation, whatever you prefer. But for quicker uploads, we usually see people add to memory through messages, through the uploader here. And then when you're trying to upload multiple files or URLs to get your AI um, up to date, maybe every week or two weeks or three weeks, then a lot of times people utilize training spaces. And I'll link a video in the description um, to training spaces. And to see all of your memories in action, you can actually just go to your memory stack um, so all of your memories here are in this area and they are here in the form of blocks. So as you can see, the individual messages are present. And then when you upload a URL or a document, as you can see here, I uploaded a, this doc to my AI prior to this. You can see it also in my memory. So if you're ever in doubt about if something you uploaded is in your memory or you're just trying to 
maybe see where a response came from. You can always search your memory stack to find those memories or to just understand what your AI knows. And then documents, I would think of documents as where the is almost the bigger piece of your memory stack. So whenever you upload a URL, a file, um, whether it's audio or text file, it all goes into your documents. And then from here, it is split up into your memory stack as individual blocks. So it's almost, so this is like the parent document, and then these are the subsequent memory blocks. And if you're trying to take an action on an, on a URL or a document, you can also go here, delete, um, save something to stack. You can go and save something to your memory. You can also go in here and edit, um, add titles and add hashtags and more. So your memory stack has the raw data while your documents is more geared towards being uh, a, an area to manage these uploads um, at scale. And lastly, let's talk a little bit, a little bit about chatting. Once you add memories to your AI, you will be able to chat with it more effectively by simply sending prompts. A personally, I prompt is a question or a statement that is designed to elicit a response from the AI. So as I just was doing, this can be used to help train your AI or just get a conversation started. And just here are some general tips I would keep in mind when you're talking to your personal AI. Um, and these are different from talking to other models. I would message your AI as if your AI is a person rather than an AI model. Since your personal AI draws on the data you input into the platform, if you write as a person, it will generate answers that sound like a person. Um, and that's just an important thing to keep in mind when talking to your AI. Another important thing to keep in mind is your personal AI will respond in the shorter form when you begin in longer form as you add more memories. Since your personal AI is designed to train continuously on your data and your memories, your personal AI needs more memories to be able to generate long form responses because it needs to have more context on what its purpose is and on the memories that it has. And this, this usually comes with time or it comes with the, uh, or you have to invest time upfront in getting that those memories in. Because as mentioned earlier, when you have a when you ask a question that elicits a low score, and that data is coming, that data is general, it's usually fairly concise because the purpose there is, the purpose of that response is not necessarily to. To be a replacement of what your response would be, it's meant to be a, almost a template or just a general response that from that you can use to edit. So. As you upload more memories, your AI will respond and be more detailed and have longer responses rather than the beginning. It'll be more concise because it has less memories. And then another important aspect I would consider is think about growing and, ev and evolving your AI rather than thinking of this as a one-time use of an AI service or a bot. Personai, as mentioned, is not a pre-trained AI with an algorithm on a given data set. So this is to keep your AI neat and pristine with your purpose and no other agendas. It has the elements of general AI as mentioned when you have a poor response, but the goal is to increase your personal scores over time and, the, and evolve your AI so it becomes an extension of you or your brand. So that's an important mindset to have because it is not, it is an AI that grows in value as you invest more time into it and add more memories in.